Exploring Tomorrow. Now, here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, John Campbell, Jr. There's the old saying that power corrupts, and the absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know, it isn't really power that corrupts, but immunity, immunity to punishment and control. And every fool with a little power wants to achieve that immunity. Usually, it's held that like attracts like. The two individuals with the same great fundamental characteristic will be normally attracted to each other. You know, this isn't necessarily so. It may not be true. You may have two people who don't like each other, but are forced by the very nature of the fact that they have a unique characteristic to endure each other. Just a little more. <laughs> oh, Alan, isn't it beautiful the way it bubbles and bubbles? <laughs> oh, Alan, let's have champagne every night on our honeymoon. You want to take a bath in it? I can arrange that, too. Oh, Alan, <laughs> really? <laughs> pink champagne? <laughs> Just as pink as you're blushing right now. Oh, Alan. <laughs> What's the matter? Do you think Mr. and Mrs. Alan Carvel are going to live like the rest of the slobs? I tell you, baby... Alan. Well, what's wrong, Alan? Nothing. Alan. You look so funny all of a sudden. Get off my back. Thank heaven I've found you. Why haven't you been answering me these last few days? Do I have to check in with you everything I do, every place I go? Alan? No, it's all right. I'm, I'm all right, Jeannie. J- j- just leave me alone for a minute, hmm? Get out of my mind, Laurie. Get out, I tell you. I'll talk to you later. You'll talk to me now. What are you doing with this child? What are you trying to hide from me? All right, all right. I'll get rid of her, then I can talk to you. Give me 20 or 30 minutes to take her home. I'll give you half an hour, that's all. And don't try to close up your mind and hide from me again. All right, all right, I say. Jeannie. Jeannie, it's all right. You went so white there all of a sudden. Alan, honey, are you sick? No, no, it's just one of those migraine headaches of mine. Honey, look, I'd better take you home. Oh, honey. No, it's all right. I just need some sleep, that's all. Come on. Let's get your coat. Oh, you you better not come in. That old landlady. Oh, that's okay. Good night, baby. Good night now. And, And get lots of sleep. Take care of your poor head. Call me in the morning. That's the deal. Good night, honey. What makes you do things like that, Alan? You stuck with me every inch of the way, didn't you? How old is she? Sixteen? Seventeen. What's it to you? Oh, I have to be conscience for both of us. Thank you, sweet Lorraine. Who asked you to? You did, Alan. You always have. All these things you do are challenges to me to set right. All your venom against a fate that made you one of the only two telepaths in the world is twisted against me, your only partner in this lonely land. You strike out at me because I'm like you. And because by the same chance that made us, I'm the stronger one. That's a lie. I can break loose from you any time. I... Let me go. I... I can't breathe. I won't hurt you, Alan. I could never hurt you. Though I thank whoever or whatever is responsible for making us as we are, that it's me, not you, who has the additional power to reach out and move physical objects with my mind. You would. You waste something like that and then feel good about it. What I could do with something like that. Why don't you leave me alone? Because I love you, Alan. If you'd been a man with decent instincts, bound as we are together, we could have married and found what little happiness is possible for two like us in this world. But there's a twisted streak in you that wouldn't let you settle for that. Go ahead, play the little mother. You're no good for anything else. 
You didn't think so once, Alan. You're over the hill, baby. Face it. I've faced it, Alan. Have you? What do you mean? Can't you see you're getting worse? When we were just children together, before we'd even seen each other face to face, we used to talk to each other at night, clear across the city, mind to mind, about how someday we'd go out and find others like us. But if you had the chance to find someone like us now, you wouldn't take it. You don't want others. You want to be the only one. Why not? Why not? You've got a gun in your pocket right now. Don't you see the danger in all that? Don't you know what it can do to you? Don't try to scare me, Lori. I'm not trying to scare you, Alan. A telepath living in a world of non-telepaths is not a normal person. He can't be. He has to walk a chalk line all the time to preserve his sanity. He can't afford inner conflicts or emotional violences or shocks. What do you plan to do with that girl? What's the gun for? And what's that you're trying to hide right now, right under the surface of your mind there? All right. You want to know? I'll tell you. I'm getting out. I'm getting away from this city and away from you, and that girl goes with me. I'm going to take what I want, anything I want, and live like I deserve to, and you can't stop me. Alan! Alan, answer me! Don't shut yourself off from me like that! Alan! Alan! Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. This is Bill Goodwin. You know, someone once said humor is the true democracy. And that's why we Americans can smile when we tell the stories of the legendary heroes who helped to build our country's great institutions and industries. Like Bowleg Bill, hero of the tuna fishing industry. Back in Provincetown, Massachusetts, they claimed that when it came to hauling in the horse mackerel, as the Easterners call tuna... Bill could handle two gaffs at once and catch more than any six men put together. And they're still talking about the time Bill caught old Slick Britches, the biggest hoss mackerel of them all. No one could ever get his hook into Slick Britches, who weighed 2,000 pounds and had a tail six feet long. But Bowleg Bill promised to land him single-handed. He set out in his boat, toss up, and when he spotted Slick Britches, he made a grab for him. But the tuna slipped through his hand. So Bill dove over the side, and before folks knew what had happened... Bill was sitting astride old Slick Britches, who was bucking like a bronco. He leaped almost a mile out of the water, but Bill hung on. All over the harbor they went, jumping and leaping, but still Bill hung on. Finally, Slick Britches gave one last leap over the toss-up, and then calmed down all the fight gone out of him. Bill steered him toward shore, but all of a sudden, he headed him back out to sea, slapped the tuna's tail, and jumped off. The folks were mighty disappointed when Slick Britches disappeared, But it was like Bill told him, there's nothing that'll break a cow hand's heart so quick as to find a critter with the rough all rode off at the first mount. Yes, sir, it is a democracy which lets us tell the stories of such a legendary character as Bowleg Bill with a twinkle in our eyes and a chuckle in our throats. And so long as we continue to laugh together as a people, ladies and gentlemen, we will live together as a nation. Telepathy has long seemed like a wonderful thing to have, a wonderful possession. But have you ever considered it in terms of the absolute end of privacy? You know, explorers have found that if you put two men in one little cabin isolated far away from the rest of the world, they don't learn to like each other. They learn to hate each other. Yeah, Sue? That wake you, honey? Uh, oh, I-, I thought you was going to watch the Late Late Show on Channel 2. Well, it's just a little past midnight. Oh, I'm sorry I woke you, honey. I just, just felt like phoning. Hmm? No, it's quiet as a church. Been through the plant in the tool shop four times already. I'm just going to check the offices and... Now, come on. Now, stop worrying. Nobody knows about these night payroll deliveries. Anyway, they've come and gone. The money's already in the safe. Sure. Sure, I will. What? It's a gun you feel in your back. You say goodbye and hang up fast. And don't sit around. Uh, No, no, no. It's it's, it's all right. I I, I just remembered I forgot to ring in, and I'll better hurry and do that right now. I'll call you back later. Goodbye. 
All right, let's head for that safe over there. Now, move. Don't worry. I have a healthy respect for guns. That is over there. Uh, I don't know what good's going to do. I, I ain't got the combination. Shut up. I'll stand over there where I can watch you. Hey, you opened it right up. Who told you the combination? The president of the company. Are you kidding? What is this, a gag of some kind? Look, if this is just a joke, mister... No! I didn't make... Think about jumping me, will you? You slob! Slob! Slob, that's all he was, a slob. Oh, Alan, please tell me what this is all about. You go home with a migraine headache, and then you, you call up and get me out in the middle of the night. And you keep drinking, but you won't tell me what's the matter. What's the matter? <laughs> that's a funny one. Come here. Come here, come close. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Alan, you're hurting my arm. Listen to me. You want to know some? Mm-hmm. You know how trees think? Mm-hmm. Hmm? They think real long, slow, and peaceful. And sometimes they take all winter just to think one, one little thought. Trees? Mm-hmm. Thinking? Oh, it isn't real thinking. It's just living, uh, you know? You hear them living calm and quiet and uh, slow. And, and cats. Listen to me, baby. You know how cats think? I, I, I no. Well, cats think sort of S-shaped, like a snake crawling. And dogs, you know, dogs are all excited. Up and down, you know, like a pogo stick. <laughs> Even when they're dreaming. Everything thinks. Do you know that, Jeannie? Everything. All day long. Forever. Never. Everything goes on thinking. As long as they live. And when they die. Alan, are you cold? Hmm? Let me hold you. Oh, you're shivering like crazy. Give me a drink. Hmm? Sweetheart, you've had enough. I want a drink, I said. Hey, give me yours. You're not touching it anyway. <laughs> Alan, I really think you shouldn't be... Ah, look, I've got a better idea. Tell you what, let's, let's get out of here. Let's get out of this town tonight and we'll go far away where she can never find us. Uh, we'll take my car and we'll head south. Right now. We can buy what we need as we go. We'll get married on the way. What do you say, Jeannie? Well, uh, Alan, I do You'll love me. I... Don't you love me, baby? You're, you said you'd always do anything I ever wanted. Well, this is what I want. Get out tonight. And don't worry about money. i got lots of it. You have? Sure. Where did you get a lot of money all of a sudden? I'll tell you when we're on the road, okay? Well, answer me. Or do I leave you behind here? Alan, you, you wouldn't go off and leave me. Oh, of course not, honey. But I've got to go. There's, there's no two choices about it. And i got to go now. Now you're coming with me, or aren't you? One of the worst things about a conscience is that the darn thing is always going with you wherever you are. Alan had something other than a conscience, and running away didn't do much good. You know, telepathy has no distance limitations. Alan? Alan? What? It's starting to get light. Alan, you never did tell me where you got the money. Not now, not now. Can't you see I'm out of my feet? Well, we could stop and get a couple of hotel rooms somewhere. No, we've got to keep driving. But we're nearly a hundred miles out of town already. You you keep saying we've got to keep driving, but I don't like... Shut up, will you? Alan... If you don't like it, get out and take a bus back. Who needs you? Oh. I don't know what's wrong with you. You never used to be like this. Then last night... Well, just shut up! Alan... Uh... What? Nothing, nothing. Alan. I'm not turning back. Yes, you are, Alan. This time you're turning back even if I have to make you... Make me, then. Alan, you're slowing down. She's making me. She's making me. Talk out loud. You look in pretty bad shape. Give me a cigarette. There's some on the desk. I'm glad you came right back here when I turned you around. Chose there's some hope. Oh, cut it out. What did you stop me for? That watchman. 
It was you, Alan, wasn't it? What watchman? Alan. All right, all right. Yes, it was me. He was a slob, so he's dead. So what? The gun you beat him to death with is in your pocket right this minute. So what? So I'm going to have to make you go to the police and show them the gun and tell them. You can't do that by remote control. You'd have to go with me. I'll go with you. And what'll you tell them about how you happen to know all this? How about that? I will tell them. What about us? About me and you? About you? I don't want to. Are you crazy? You know what that would mean? You think they'd believe you? And if they did, do you know what it'd be for the rest of your life? You'd be owned, Lori. Owned, guarded and locked away by them. The slobs, like a piece of machinery, made to do what they wanted you to do for them. You'd never be free again. All I ever wanted was what any woman wants, the chance to lead a normal life. Look at me, Alan. I'm not bad-looking. I never was. But the only man I could ever have been a normal wife to was you, and you never grew up. You've been a selfish little boy all your life, and I, I've paid for it. Why didn't you leave me alone? Just leave me alone. Leave you alone? Do you think you ever really wanted me to leave you alone? I was forced to love you the same way the only woman in the world would be forced to love the only man in the world. Well, now it's too late. I can't let you kill again. Then do it. Go ahead, handcuff me with that mind of yours. Take me to the cops. Make them believe you. Do you think that'll stop me? Do you think there's any jail that can hold me? Any guards that can keep me? Go ahead. You're the only force in this world that can chain me, and you can't watch me 24 hours a day. You've got to sleep sometimes and... Lori. Lori, you're choking. <laughs> you would break loose, wouldn't you, Alan? You would kill again, in spite of all I could do to stop you. All right, you can breathe now. No, don't look at me like that. I'm not going to kill you. Even now, I can't do that. That gun of yours is in your inside pocket. Lift your right hand, Alan. Put it inside your coat. Now, take out the gun. Don't try to fight my will, Alan. You know it's no use. Now, you will point it at me. No. No, Laurie, not you. Anyone but you. Not you, Laurie, not you! Darling, can't you hear me? Jeannie. Sweetheart, just try to move your finger. Or your eyes. Just, just move your eyes a little so I'll know you'll hear me. Jeannie, I can't move. I can't do anything. Help me. Oh, no. It's like being buried alive. I'm paralyzed. Help me. Lori. Lori, come back and help me. Lori. Lori. So, Alan had his wish fulfilled. Alan wanted immunity from uh, consequences of his actions. There's only one way to achieve it, and he achieved it. If you do nothing, if you have no actions, whatever, then you have immunity from consequences. And that's the only way. Otherwise, you're responsible for what you do, whether you like it or not. Yo 
join us for a fascinating adventure in Exploring Tomorrow. Heard in our cast tonight from Mandel Kramer and Bryna Rayburn. Script was by Gordon Dixon. Produced and directed by Sanford Marshall here in New York. Bill Maher speaking. We pause now for station identification. <laughs> 